I was asked to write an appraisal and a brief foreword for a book dealing with the life of the late Dale Carnegie, whom I happened to cherish as a personal friend. I was impressed by a quotation from Mr. Carnegie in which he said, we have only one chance on this earth at that fantastic adventure called life. And that's a fact. Only one chance on this earth to do something with this curious, tremendous thing called life. This being the case, it stands to reason that we want to do something worthwhile with it. And the question that you and I might very well ask ourselves, no matter what our age may be, how well are we doing with it? Well, there's one way, among others, but this is an important way that you can do something great with it. And that is to let positive thinking work for you. Now, what do we mean by positive thinking? Naturally, it's the other side of negative thinking. Perhaps the best way to describe positive thinking is to describe a positive thinker. A positive thinker, he or she, is an individual who is tough and rugged mentally and who sees every difficulty and who sees them straight, but who is never abashed by nor defeated by these difficulties because the positive thinker knows that with the help of the good God in him or her can be handled anything you'll ever face up with in this life. Now, the people who've done extraordinary things in this world have without exception been positive thinkers. None of them ever believed that they could be defeated. They always knew with the help of God that they could if they thought they could. A few months ago in England, we were one afternoon at the little Yorkshire village of Whitby. Whitby, back in the 1700s, was the center of shipbuilding. And Whitby ships were known and respected all over the world. It was from Whitby that the famous Captain Cook began all of his voyages, on one of which he discovered the East coast of the continent of Australia. They have a gigantic bronze statue of Captain Cook looking out over the bay that leads to the sea. And I sat there contemplating him because I've followed him myself all around the world. Seems wherever you go in the Pacific area, you'll run into the footsteps of the legendary Captain Cook. And this was his hometown. I noticed the names of his ships. They were engraved in the statuary. Resolution, Endeavor, Discovery, Adventure. And it said on the statue, that these ships took him on his various enterprises, took him to glory, and finally 
left him at rest. And then they quoted a famous statement of Captain Cook. To strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. He died at 57 on a faraway island now called Hawaii to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. This means that you and I on stormy seas will sail our little ships. Let them be called resolution. Let them be called endeavor. Let them be called adventure. Let them be called discovery on the principle that we win if we seek and strive and never yield. So that is a kind of a description of a positive thinker. But not all positive thinkers are of the legendary, immortal character of Captain Cook, but still they're great people just the same. I note today that women are finally coming into their own in the industrial life of uh, this nation, and that's uh, oh, long overdue. Why any one sex should be considered uh, superior to another it has no justification in fact. But years ago, we had a woman in this church who became uh, president of her company. This was 30 years ago or 40 years ago. She attained in her time the stature of one of the greatest saleswomen or salespersons in the United States. She was quite a character. She was aggressive. Some people didn't like her because she threw her weight around and she had plenty to throw around. <laughs> but, but she was strong, you see. She was somebody. And even if she gave offense at times, still she was a great human being. Her name was Blanche Green. She was married to a school teacher in New England in the old days when women never did any work except to cook. And she was of the gentle kind at that time, so I understood. And then all of a sudden one day her husband died and left her alone. She had no money. So she had to go to work. And it was incomprehensible because women of her type never worked in the marketplace. It wasn't done. No gentle woman who wore white gloves all the time would ever get out in the marketplace and work. But Blanche had to or starve. And the government didn't take care of people in those days as it does now. And anyway, she would never have permitted that. So she went over to New Haven where Two young men were starting a business, and she told them she wanted to be a salesperson for them. And they looked at her, and they said, well, what do you know about selling? She said, absolutely nothing. But she said, I've prayed about it, and the Lord told me that I can be a great salesperson, and I will put your business on its feet. Well, they were astonished, but they believed her. And she went out to sell, house to house, in a day when women didn't do this sort of thing. So this is the way she did it. The night before, she planned her work. And the day after, she worked her plan. And that became her motto, plan your work and work your plan. And when she went up to the first house, to sell. She stood by the gate and she repeated 
the eighth chapter of Romans, verse 31. If God be for us, who can be against us? And then she personalized it. If God be for me, who and what can be against me? And she walked up to the woman, and she said, she was glad that I came to sell to her. <laughs> Whenever I think of Blanche, I think of the power of positive thinking. She told me again and again, you must never even vaguely entertain the thought that you cannot because with God you can do anything. Now, this is why I suggest that you let positive thinking work for you. Because it has a strange and wonderful power to set you free from defeat and to put you on the way to victory. I recall while I was sitting in my office this morning about a big league baseball pitcher who came to see me one Sunday. He saw me before the service because he said, I have to go to Ebbets Field to pitch and I can't stay for church. They have to report early. I said, why did you want to see me? Because, said he, I read your book on positive thinking and I need some positive help. I said, what help do you need? He said, I can't get over a sore arm. I've been to the doctors. They've done everything for this arm. They tell me that the arm is basically all right, but he says, Dr. Peel, when I get it up about that high, I feel a twinge of pain. And he said, my specialty is a very fast ball, and this requires power in the arm. And he said, I want you to pray over my arm and make it well so I can pitch this afternoon because they don't know my arm is sore. I said to him, now look, uh, son, I am not a healer. He said, I know you're not, but God is, isn't he? I said, yes, God is. And he said, Jesus is, isn't he? I said, yes, Jesus is, but I'm not. But he said, you're a believer, aren't you? I said, yes, I'm a believer. He said, I'm a believer. So he explained, we have all the elements that are necessary for the healing of my arm. And then he quoted me a passage of scripture if any two of you will agree as touching any matter and will ask your heavenly Father for it, he will grant it to you. For where two or three are gathered together in his name, there am I in the midst of them. So he says, you're a believer and I'm a believer. And Jesus says, that he will do anything we ask. So he says, we ask him now for the healing of my arm. <laughs> well, I said, all right, we'll pray. So I put my arm, my hand up on his arm. I want to tell you, did you ever feel a, a piston of a driving engine? This was it. An immense arm. I couldn't get my hand around it. I can't get my hand around mine, for that matter. <laughs> but I can get it further around mine than I around to his. It was a terrific arm. And I said, boy, what an arm. He said, yes, sir, God made it. And I said, he sure did. And when he made it, he made it good. 
So I said, dear Lord, here's a nice boy, and he loves you, and he believes in you, and he's a great pitcher, and he wants to go over there and pitch baseball, the great old American game, but he's got a soreness in his arm that the doctors haven't been able to take out of it. Dear Lord, put your hand on his arm, and he would... And he said to me, now let me pray. And he said, dear Lord, you heard just what Dr. Peel said. And I say amen to what he said. <laughs> and he said, he's asked you to heal my arm. I believe that, he, that, it, that it, it will be healed, and he believes it, and we claim the principle of the two or three. Oh, what do you think happened? What do you think happened? He went there that afternoon. He pitched the entire nine innings. Nobody scored a run against him. And he called me up that night, and he said, thanks for what you did for me. I said, you know I didn't do a single solitary thing for you. Yeah, he said, I know. You just hung around and made it two or three. Now, if you ask me whether I understand this, I don't know. I don't know that I do. I have seen other cases where this didn't happen, but it did happen. That means it can happen. That means it will happen. Not necessarily a sore arm, but whatever deficiency you've got in your life, can be overcome by the upthrust of a positive faith. And I find that people are working at this everywhere. For example, I get all kinds of letters about books I've written on this subject, but I, I really think this was <laughs> is one of the most interesting. The only trouble I've ever had in my life physically was have to go to the dentist once in a while. And I always hated to do it, although nowadays they've gotten very skillful. And the dentist that I go to is just the greatest, never hurts you at all. But in the old days, the old days, it was torture. <laughs> now they've gotten these high speed drills with water and everything, you never know it when they drill into you. <laughs> but here's a dentist that really knows about positive thinking. He, he, he practices in Los Angeles on Sunset Boulevard. He says, Dear Dr. Peel, I am writing this letter to express my feelings as to how much positive thinking has influenced my life. Not only has it helped me immeasurably in my personal life, but I have borrowed many of the quotes from your Power of Positive Thinking book. And with the help of my daughter, who, C-A-L-L-I-G-R-A-P-H-I-E-D Cal them, how do, how do you say it? Calligraphy them. Well, anyway, we're lost in this word at the moment. <laughs> Calligraphy it comes from. Anyway, with the help of my daughter who painted them on the wall, <laughs> on the ceiling, we placed the quotes on the ceiling of my dental operatories. I never knew they called them that before. <laughs> operatories. Now, this man's a highly educated dentist. <laughs> He's he more highly educated than I am, that's for sure. <laughs> My patients thoroughly enjoy them. You see, the patient is back like that, looking up at it on the ceiling, and it gives them positive thoughts, which in turn places them on a higher plane. I like this. It's great. This even helps them to cope with their own problems. It is one of the best things I have going in my office. 
Well, it, my book on positive thinking was written 27 years ago, but this is the first time I ever heard that a dentist painted quotations from it on the ceiling. You lie there while they grind at you and you... <laughs> and you say to yourself, this is terrific! <laughs> well, it seems sort of foolish, but at the same time, it is a fact that if we control our thoughts, we control our bodies. And if we control our bodies with our thoughts, we control our lives. If God be for us, who can be against us? I knew a man here in New York who had a very tough time in business, but he finally came out of it most successfully. I used to go and talk with him sometimes during the terrible discouragements through which he was passing. I was impressed because never once did I hear him complain. Never once did I hear him say, I don't think I can make it. Never once did I hear him say, I'll not come out of this successfully. Always. I'd see him here in church singing hymns with a light on his face, and I knew he was going through horrendous difficulty. And it went on not for weeks, but for months, even for several years, until finally he broke through into successful achievement. And I said to him, Jim, how in the world did you ever keep it going. Very simple, he said. Every morning of my life and every evening of my life, I read for 15 minutes from the Bible. I pray and I meditate. I see the presence of Jesus. And then he said, I empty all negative thoughts one by one out of my mind. And I fill my mind with faith thoughts. Faith thoughts that I get out of the Bible. And I know that if I stick with it, and God stays with me, my faith thoughts will ultimately overcome the negative thought, which they did, which is another way of saying, ah, you know, that is really a terrific verse from the Bible. Romans 8, 31. If God be for us, who in the world can be against us? If God be for us, what in the world can be against us? So let positive thinking work for you because it will work well. It will achieve well. In this book that I referred to in the, at the outset of this talk uh, by, about Dale Carnegie, he has a story there of Vash Young. <clears throat> Some of you who are older may remember Vash Young. He was in his time the greatest insurance salesman in the United States, the most highly paid salesman in this country. But he wasn't always that way. There was a time when he was in such dire poverty, such discouragement, that he decided to take his own life, and he went into a three-story hotel. He figured that by throwing himself out the window three stories, he could kill himself, but he didn't have the nerve, so he got a quart of whiskey, drank all that in order to give him courage, but instead that put him to sleep. And the next morning when he awakened, he found himself not dead, but facing the same old thing. So what did he do then? He saw a Bible line there, and he began to read the Bible. 
And all of a sudden it came to him, why, you're foolish. You just put your life in the hands of the Lord, and you don't need to kill yourself. You want to make yourself live. And so he got down by the side of the bed, and instead of throwing himself out of the window, he threw himself down by the side of the bed into the arms of the Lord. And when he rose up from that, he was a new man, and he began to cast out the old defeat thoughts, and he began to take in new, positive, powerful success thoughts. And he went out from that little cheap hotel where he was going to kill himself. He went out to live this exciting life this fantastic life, he found that he had only one chance to do something with it, and he wrote five books, four of which became bestsellers, and in his time, he was the greatest salesperson in the whole United States. Talk about drama. This is what Christianity does to people. If you've got any feeling of defeat in you this morning, forget it and turn to Jesus and say to yourself, if God be for me, who or what can be against me? And you'll be on the way to new victories like you never dreamed of, to strive, to seek, to find, and never to yield. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great blessing of power, life-changing, spiritual growth and strength which you give to us. Help us to let not only positive thinking work for us, but more deeply, positive faith in the Lord Jesus who can make any person as he did in the days gone by, great and greater all the while. And in his name, we give you thanks. Amen.